Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we've finished the chapter on the systems of linear equations, now we're ready to solve systems of linear inequalities. So here's our new chapter, chapter 36, that deals just with that, systems of linear inequalities. So the first question may be, well, what is a system of linear inequalities? Well, it's very similar to a system of linear equations. Notice that in order to obtain a system of linear inequalities, we start with a system of linear equations and change the equal signs into inequality signs, either greater than or less than. It doesn't matter which way. And so we turn a system of equations into a system of inequalities. Of course, that's not the only thing. What is the purpose? Well, the difference between the two is that here you're looking for a point of intersection. If there's two equations and two unknowns, you're looking for the point where the two lines cross. If it's three equations and three unknowns, you're looking for the point where the three planes come together at a single point in space. But when we're dealing with a system of inequalities, we're looking for a region, a region in two-dimensional space. And yes, at this point, we're going to keep it at a two-dimensional space. So we're looking for a region on the xy plane that satisfies the two inequalities at the same time. Now, I'm going to show you how to do that slightly different from what the book does, because I think it's easier to do it this way, and you'll see in just a moment why. First, we're going to just do it in broad, bro, uh, what we call brush strokes. There's basically two steps, step A and step B. In a later video, we'll show you the systematic approach step by step. There will be multiple steps that you follow to go through the process of doing it correctly. But the first thing we do is we find the boundaries of the regions. We do that by taking the system of inequalities and turn it into a set of equations. So instead of writing greater than or equal to and less than or equal to, we simply put equal signs there, and then we solve those equations in terms of the y equals mx plus b format to easily graph the two equations. So the first equation, y equals minus x minus 1 half x plus 2, the intercept is a 2, and the slope is a negative 1 half. The second one, the intercept is a 1, and the slope is a positive 1. You do see that they cross at one point, but that's not the objective here. At some point, we will want to know what that point is, but here it's not important. Now you see that there's four regions that are displayed based upon those two lines. And one of those four regions is the solution to the system of linear inequalities. And so we have to figure out which of these two regions or which of these four regions does indeed solve that system of linear inequalities. So the way to do that is we pick a test point. And what I like to do is I like to pick the test point 0, 0 if it's available. If none of the border, if none of the boundary lines, and that's not a very straight line, but hey, it's good enough. If, if one of our boundary lines goes right through the origin, then of course it's not a good point to pick. But if none of the lines go to the origin, 0, 0 is always the best point to pick. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each of the two equations one at a time and notice what I did. I labeled the two equations so it's easy to associate the inequalities and the equations to the lines on the xy plane, on the graph that we made. So what we do is we replace x and y by 0 and 0. So what we want to do is for equation number 1, notice for equation number 1 and line number 1, it's beginning to bother me, it's not very straight. There we go. It's a little straighter. All right. Not much. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to take this point and notice this line divides the whole plane into two regions, this region and this region. So the zero, zero point either lies in the region that satisfies inequality or does it lie in the region. In other words, the other side satisfies inequality. So let's try it. We're going to plug in the zero, zero. So zero plus zero is that greater than or equal to four question mark. So in other words, is this a true statement? If it is, then this point lies on the correct side of the line. If it's not, it lies on the incorrect side of the line. So let's try it. Is 0 greater than 4? Of course it's not. The answer is no. Therefore, this point lies on the incorrect side of that line, so I'm going to get rid of that side. This is not part of the solution, so I'm going to scratch it away. That's how I like to do it. Because the way the book does it is different, but the book has it easy. They can just print whatever they want once they know the final answer. We're trying to find the final answer, and this is an easier way to do it. 
So now we're going to take line number two. Again, we pick the same point. Notice line number two divides the plane in two regions. Is this point on the correct side or the incorrect side of that line? So we plug in the values. Zero plus zero, is that less than or equal to one question mark? In this case, the answer is yes. Zero is less than one, which means that the point lies on the correct side of this line. That means the other side is the side I don't want, so I'm going to scratch out the other side of that line. And then the region we're looking for is the only region on the plane that is not being crossed out yet. This is the correct solution. So this is the region that satisfies both of these inequalities at the very same time because we got rid of all the other regions that do not. Remember, there were four regions. These three do not. This one does. That's the solution to our system of linear inequalities. So you wonder, what is the system of linear inequalities? It looks very similar to a system of linear equations, but in this case, the linear equations are simply the boundaries of the regions that are formed on the xy plane by the system of linear inequalities, and then by doing some checks, we can figure out which side of these boundaries satisfy and do not satisfy the inequalities, and then the ones that are remaining, after you scratch away all the sides that don't, that's the region we're looking for, that is the solution to our system of linear equations, uh, linear inequalities, and that is how it's done. Yeah, but your teacher teaches it shaded the correct region, then um, makes it kind of harder. Well, it gets messy. No, I'm just saying that some teachers they want you to shade in the curve. So, okay, that's a good question. So let's, let's do it over here. Let's, let's redraw the two lines, roughly. So we have one line that went like this, and the other line that went like this. So again, we have four regions. Region number one, region number two, region number three, and region number four. And we had line number one, and we had line number two, and we picked the test point right here. And the first case, we said, okay, the point zero lies on the incorrect side of the incorrect side of this line. So the way some books do it and some teachers do it, they like to shade the side that satisfies. So say this side satisfies the solution. So this is a yes and this is a no for line number one. And then they do it again for line number two. And they found that in this case, this side did satisfy. So then they go ahead and shade this and don't shade that side. So this is a yes and this is a no. So then the place that's shaded twice then becomes a solution. So this region is the only region that was shaded twice. And they say then this is the solution. But to me, it's so messy. It's a lot cleaner to do it like that. Get rid of what doesn't belong and what's not shaded at the very end. What's clean is the solution. It's a personal preference. You can see you can do it both ways. And then if you do it like this, then you say the region that was shaded the most number of times, because it could be three lines or four lines or five lines. And each time you shade one part out. And then you're looking for the region that was shaded five times versus the one that's rated four times or three times. And it gets very difficult to see. There, it's so clean. It's the only region that didn't get shaded is the solution. I prefer that method. I know you do. <laughs> it would be a lot easier and clearer if you use different color pens for each line. If you use different colors, and that's sometimes what the books will do, if they have different shaded colors, and then they say the one that they use red and blue, and the red and blue together forms purple, so the purple region is, it just, to me, just messy. It's just so much cleaner to do it like that. Yeah, but Here it is. Messy or clean? <laughs> well, you're right. Some teachers do want it like this. And um, so that's how it's done by a lot of people. I just don't know why.